with courage and standing up for the right things and being a troublemaker like me and maybe that's the reason why we get along as well as we do but we can't keep going the way that we are and we have to have some troublemakers in Annapolis we have to have folks that are going to stand up and say hell no we won't go at least quietly into this nasty night that Annapolis continues to put us in Eric is full of energy he has a lot of ideas some of them are off the wall but if you listen to them they make sense and sometimes the off the wall stuff is just what we need so from one troublemaker to another it is my honor and privilege to introduce Eric Boucher thank Michelle thank you for that introduction Michelle and I go back about 12 years I originally worked with her on the Central Maryland Republican Bull Rose for Governor Bob Roark and through her help and about six other central committees we put 900 people in a room for Governor Ehrlich it was a big success I must say it's an honor to be up here with the Duke look I, I am a predominantly happy person because I know this much about life my mama and Jesus loves me and he loves all of you and if you remember that you can have the courage to achieve things in this life I am running for the Maryland House of Delegates in the new redistrict 9A, which we what is left of Delegate Susan Krebs, Southern Carroll County District. We got a screwing in the redistricting. And, and I, I don't know if you all know this or recognize my name from the paper, but I, as an individual, on my own, as my own attorney, sued the Maryland state government last year all the way to the United States Supreme Court over the redistricting. Even though I lost, I had the courage to stand up and fight and say what is right for the citizens and the rural counties of this state. We are being abused by a machinery in Annapolis that exploits the rural voters. We are denied our adequate representation guaranteed under the United States Constitution. And I remember standing in front of the Maryland Court of Appeals as my own attorney against a team of six attorneys from the Attorney General's office. And Judge, Chief Judge Bell said to me, he said, Mr. Boucher, what do you think we are going to do about this? Very sarcastically, I said, Your Honor, I don't think you're going to do anything about it. He said, then why are you here? I said, because I want to take this to the United States Supreme Court, which I did. And even though I didn't get a hearing for the court, I was able to practice law and submit a petition to them. But I'm not going to give up because I truly believe in the value of my argument and want to continue on. And that's why I decided to run for the House of Delegates. I want to represent Southern Carroll County, which is basically the new district, everything south of Liberty Road and east of Woodbine Road, linked up with Western Howard County. And fate would have it that this district is actually good for me to run to accomplish this. I'm originally a Howard County resident, grew up in Elk Ridge, attended Howard High School, went to St. Augustine's Catholic School, and I want to bring those two communities together because Western Howard County and Southern Carroll County have a lot in common. Now it's a two delegate district and I'm friends with both delegates Gail Bates and Warren Miller hold the seats. Gail Bates is running for the state senate so one of those two seats is open. And I go around advocating to everyone that you have two votes. And even if I'm not your first choice, I'd like to be your second choice to win that seat. And then I had had the platform to fight for our rights down in the General Assembly. One of the biggest problems with the redistricting and the reason we're exploited in this state is the redistricting is done through the governor's office. It is so disconnected from the people. And one of these off the wall ideas that Michelle is referenced to, I advocate that the redistricting should be done by a convention of delegates elected by the citizenry of every county based upon their population. And that if an individual is a state or federal legislator, they cannot serve on that convention committee to draw the boundary lines. That way, the boundaries that come out for our congressmen wouldn't look like salamanders. And the boundaries that we have in a General Assembly wouldn't be so gerrymandered to manipulate the results so one party can dominate the elections. I believe that every county in the state of Maryland should have equal senators, two senators, just like every state has two senators. And no matter what the size of the population, you should be guaranteed at least one member of the House of Delegates. 
So if you were Somerset County, which I think is the least populated county in the state, you would have two rep three representatives in total in the General Assembly, just like Rhode Island has or Montana. And people say, well, that's not one man, one vote. Well, neither is two senators from California up against two senators in Rhode Island. And the purpose of that is extremely important. And that purpose is the fact that we are a republic. We are not a democracy. And it sounds funny, but that's the reality of life. And the purpose we have that is because our founding fathers knew that if you do not have that mechanism in place to protect a minority, then the majority, all they need is one extra vote and they can exploit everyone else and they do it in this state. That's why Baltimore City, PGA County, and Montgomery County have the population for the votes in the General Assembly and they exploit and manipulate the rest of us that are hard working in this state. So my long-term objective is to ensure that the districts are drawn based upon representatives of the people who we vote for every 10 years to go draw those boundaries. And then we'd have a Republican form of government which is guaranteed under Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution. It's something I'm very passionate about. You know, 20 years ago I ran for the State Senate in Howard County. And I'd advocated being pro-business. Well, I wasn't a businessman at the time. I lost the election and then decided to start my own business. Just like Dave mentioned, we need more people who have business experience. So for the last 20 years, I've been in business doing welding and metal fabrication for the defense, commercial, and industrial markets. And in the last seven years, I've watched my business drop down to 30% of what it once was. I've watched my customers flee to state. It's horrible. I like to have people work for me so they can pay their mortgage, feed their kids. It's, it's excruciating to see your customers leave and you have to let people go. I don't think most of our politicians down in Annapolis have ever worked in the private industry or been in the private sector. They have no idea what it's like to make a payroll. They know what it's like to raise their taxes and take their money. It's easy to do that. But it's hard to do what I do or what Dave has done. And I'd like to have your support in this election. Is there any questions? Bob, now that's someone I've known in this room longer than anyone else. I knew him when his hair was dark. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and I knew him when he was down in our views. You want to use the microphone? Please? Yeah, I'll use it. <laughs> First, I agree with everything you said about the redistricting. Uh, in a word, it's tyranny. Uh, in a word, I have about as much use uh, for the Maryland Court of Appeals as I do for compost. But here, here's the point. Do you have the right to go back in and uh, ask for certiori in front of the Supreme Court on this, or will it have to be someone else with different standing? Well, I, I filed a writ of certiorari, which I realized was the hardest legal document in the United States judicial system to file and I filed it and they accepted it. I think it blew their mind. I don't think they had the guts to accept the argument from an individual, but I hope in the future as someone who holds public office, I can generate more support. I was ignored, but I stood up there and fought, and I thought it was a brave thing to do, in spite of the odds, because I know in the long term, my argument is correct. And if I am persistent at this, and I spread the word, get enough people behind me, I think I'll be victorious at this. And not only will it change how we are representing the state of Maryland, this will affect the entire United States. Every state in the union should have representation that is a Republican form. And I want to be able to accomplish that. Right. Any other questions? Yes. Can I make sure Andy Harris is in my, uh, on my farm? <laughs> I know Andy for a while. Andy's a great guy. I, I worked with him when I was in the Baltimore County Republican Central Committee. Too bad we all don't have him in Carroll County. Yes, sir. Thank you, James. Thank you. Would you support introducing a bill into the legislature that would change the State Board of Education from being appointed by the governor to be an elected office. It's not a subject 
it's, it's not a subject that I'm very well versed on, but I do believe that most things should be elected. If you do a bad job, the voters kick you out. Anyone else? I'd like to thank our legislators who are here tonight. They've done a wonderful job. I go back a good distance with Delegate Krebs. I'm honored to potentially pick up her constituents. Oh, one thing I almost forgot. This redistricting is potentially going to knock Carroll County to having three resident delegates from four. That's hideous. And the reason they link Southern Carroll County to Howard County is because they want us to lose a resident delegate. So my campaign, being the only resident from Carroll County out of the five that are running, is their last chance to save their fourth resident delegate. It's extremely important that we all get behind this campaign. Not just because it's me, but because it's us as a county. We're getting screwed, and this is our last hope in my candidacy that we will have that fourth resident delegate representing their interests in Annapolis. Thank you very much.